Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a Friday Reads. It's been a long week. I mean, it, it hasn't been that bad. I mean, real life, like, world events, not great. Uh, work's been fine. It's just been, like, you know, general busyness. And so I was going to do a book call this week, but I just realized I'm not going to have the time to sit down and record. So I needed something a little bit fast and easy. Um, so I'm doing a Friday Reads. I'm going to talk about two books that I've recently finished. And then I'm going to talk about sort of all of the things that I'm in the middle of because I'm kind of in the middle of a lot of things. I can't quite tell what I'm in the mood for at the moment. So I'm just reading all of the books until I figure it out. The two books that I finished, uh, the first one is American Fire, Love, Arson, and Life in a Vanishing Land by Monica Hess. This is a nonfiction true crime book and this was fantastic. I gave this four to five stars. I loved it. If you aren't aware in the story you are following basically this like group of arsons or this I think it was like 60 arsons that happened in this small town in Virginia and so Monica has, tells a story about this small town. She talks about like the small town as a whole as well as the specific people who were doing the arsons. This isn't really like a mystery in terms of like a whodunit but you know right away like who the culprits are and it's about um, following both them as well as the people who are investigating the crimes and seeing like how everything sort of ends up. This is so so well done. I highly recommend it. Even if you're someone who doesn't normally read nonfiction or normally reads true crime type of stuff, I found this to be so engaging. Like I think a lot of times with true crime especially, they get really bogged down with getting the facts across, but sometimes the story gets lost in the midst of all the facts and I feel like in this Monica Hess is really focusing on the story. Yeah, highly recommend this one if you haven't picked it up already. It was really great read. And then the other one that I finished was You Bring the Distant Near by Mitali Perkins. This is a young adult novel that was long listed for the National Book Award. The shortlist was recently announced and I don't believe that this was on the shortlist. This is probably on like the younger end of like the young adult spectrum but yeah this was a really delightful read. I gave it a three out of five stars just because I found the writing and the structure to be a little bit at times but it gave me like so many feelings. I really really enjoyed it. So the way this book is blurbed they talk about it like you're following these three generations of women and these are Indian Bengali women who you are following and while that's technically true uh, the vast majority of this book follows uh, the two sisters Tara and Sonia. You also get a little bit from their daughter's points of views as well as from their mother's point of view but I feel like the two sisters drive the majority of this book like I think more than half of this book is from their point of view. So yeah I think it starts off in about the 60s or 70s um, it might be the 70s because they reference the Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> and you are following this Bengali family as they are moving from London to the United States. And so you follow them as they just sort of settle in here in the United States as their father tries to, you know, do well enough to be able to provide for his family as well as like the mother trying to raise her daughters and then you follow like Tara and Sonia as they just try to figure out themselves. Yeah, like I said, I like this book. I I would say it's like four stars for feelings, three stars for writing. This book is broken up into different sections in terms of like years and so one of the problems that I had is from chapter to chapter it wasn't very clear what year you were in so sometimes there would be like multiple years between each chapter and they didn't really signify it until like a couple of paragraphs in and then you would realize because they had said like oh this people had been together for a couple of years <laughs> sort of thing and then you're like oh I guess a couple of years have passed since this previous event occurred in this last chapter. Um, so stuff like that I found to be really confusing. I found the sisters to be the most compelling characters. I didn't really care quite as much about their daughters although there are some really interesting things that are explored especially biracial relationships and biracial children which again I always really enjoy when stuff like that is in stories. One of the things I really liked in here is that they incorporate religion into these characters lives without it being like overt religious. Um, I feel like especially in you know children's literature and young adult literature you don't really see um, characters who practice a religion, any religion at all, which I always find to be really weird. Uh, so it's nice to see like some stories integrating that like even just saying things like oh this person grew up Catholic. You know that's a thing that happens in this world. So yeah I kind of enjoyed seeing that as well. So yeah I like this if you are someone who likes young adult books um, I would say pick this up because it's a really like sweet novel and it's 
sort of like what I really wanted at the moment. So, but yeah, I couldn't like rate it super highly because there are some just like structural problems that I had with it. This is turning into a longer video. I talk way too much. <laughs> In terms of things that I'm currently reading, I'm almost done with Temporary People by Deepak Unukrishanan. I have mixed feelings about this. First of all, it says a novel on the cover and this is definitely a collection of short stories. I don't know if that's a mistake. This is an art copy uh, so maybe it's a mistake that's been fixed but do not go into this thinking it's a novel because it's definitely a collection of short stories it's broken up into sections and so the first section i really enjoyed those stories second section did not enjoy like any of those stories <laughs> like maybe like one or two uh third section i'm liking slightly more in general i have a hard time with short story collections i don't like things that are super surreal. This is why I haven't read a lot of George Saunders. I feel like I keep picking up his stories and then it does things that are surreal and then I just sort of lose interest. I need my short stories to be extremely realist <laughs> otherwise I'm just not into it. That's I think is part of the reason why it lost me in the second section. The first section is very much realist uh, grounded in the current reality and the second section starts to get more and more surreal as the stories go on and I just starts to lose interest again and the third section is sort of like a midpoint between the two and I'm kind of okay with that. So yeah this is a book that mainly takes place in the uh, United Arab Emirates. It says on the back of this book that 80% of the population there is basically people from other countries who come in to work because there is such a boom in oil and whatnot. The author I believe was born in Abu Dhabi and then recently like moved to the United States so he like knows what he's talking about and I believe that his goal with this collection of short stories was to uh, provide sort of like a voice for these people who come into this country for like a temporary period of time um, and work really hard and provide a lot for the economy and then eventually leave. Um, a lot of those people are Indian. Um, I believe that this author is Malayali, which is what I am as well. So I've really been enjoying over anything else, just seeing Malayali names and places and things referenced in this book. It's been sort of like blowing my mind sometimes. If you follow me on Instagram and you watch my stories, you would have seen me talking about it a little bit. So yeah, I feel like that's what I'm enjoying more than anything else. But yeah, this short story collection is just like not my kind of short story collection. I'm so very picky when it comes to short story collections, but this is not bad by any means. I would say if you like uh, George Saunders, you should pick up this short story collection because I have a feeling you will like this as well. I'm enjoying it. It's not my favorite thing, but it might be yours. All right, the other thing that I am currently in the middle of is The Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America by Richard Rothstein. This is a nonfiction book and this was also long listed for the National Book Award, but I had had this on my radar for so long. Like if I had a dollar for every time I picked up and put down this book at a bookstore, I could probably afford to buy this book. Um, but yeah, I finally got it from the library and I'm enjoying it. It's really dry or not really dry, but it's on the drier side. So I haven't been going through this very quickly. It's also very just like information dust. The text itself isn't very dense, which I really appreciate. Oh, and I just lost my bookmark doing this. I'm on chapter eight self. <laughs> but yeah, the writing on every page isn't very dense. And the book itself is only about like 200 ish pages. There's about like 100 or 150 pages of notes and whatnot in the back. This is an odd difficult read, but I've just been taking it slow just because I can tell after about a chapter or two, I need to stop reading so I can process the information that I just read. If I just keep pushing through it, I can tell like I'm not actually taking in the information. So yeah, I'm taking it slow, but that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it. I'm on as you could tell by when I dropped my bookmark, chapter eight, <laughs> and there's only about 12 chapters. So I'm hoping to finish this over the weekend so I can just move on to some other nonfiction that I have that I will show you in a second. Another thing I started reading that I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to continue reading is uh, the new Wonder Woman book by Leigh Bardugo. I believe it's called Warbringer. After the events in Las Vegas, my head was not in a great space as I'm sure it wasn't for a lot of people and so I was just like I want something fun and light and not super intense like I feel like all of the books I currently own are really like heavy or they're like mysteries that deal with like darker topics and I didn't want anything super dark so I just went on like my library's website to see what ebooks were available and I decided to go for like young adult because young adult can often be lighter in terms of tone and so I saw that Warbringer was available. So I decided to just check it out. I only read like a chapter though before like falling asleep, but I think I'm going to try to give it like a solid go this weekend to see if I actually like it, but no guarantees. If I read it, you'll see it on Goodreads. Um, if I don't read it, then you'll never hear about this again. Um, I also picked up the Miles Morales book from Jason Reynolds. Um, so I might give that one a try too, just to see if I potentially like that story better than the Wonder Woman story. I've never read anything by Lee Bardugo, so I don't know if like just 
her writing style will vibe with me or not. I know I've read Jason Reynolds and I have enjoyed his stuff, so it's possible that I just might like the Miles Morales better because I like Jason Reynolds' writing. So yeah, other than that, I have a couple of other books that I might read. I got Dark at the Crossing by Elliot Ackerman. This one has actually made it onto the short list. Um, I got a bunch of the long list of books and so I basically decided after they announced the short list I was just going to focus on the short list books because reading all of those books is exhausting. Or at least trying to read them all before like the National Book Awards in November would exhaust me. So yeah, I definitely want to try at least to read this one. I tried to read this one a couple of weeks ago, I think when I first checked it out and my brain just wasn't processing the information well. I think it's just I was too tired. Um, so I want to give this one a good go. So I might do that this weekend, like to sit down for like a couple of hours and really read it and understand what's happening in the story. And then if I finish The Color of Law this weekend, then the next time fiction I'm going to pick up is The Brain Defense, Murder in Manhattan and the Dawn of Neuroscience in America's Courtrooms. This is a book that uh, was recommended because for the Read Harder Challenge of read a book about technology. Some people had mentioned this one and so I decided to pick it up because I really like books about neuroscience and obviously I like mysteries and thrillers and true crime books so this seemed like a good mesh of the two. This one follows this man who pushes his wife out of their apartment window. Um, he turns himself into the police and it turns out the man has a tumor on his frontal lobe uh, which is known for impacting judgment. That's sort of like the first situation of them using neuroscience in a court case to figure out uh, whether or not a person is considered guilty when they have you know neurological issues. So that sounds really interesting and I'm very intrigued just by this whole general concept. And then speaking of the Read Harder Challenge, I'm very much behind. It's very unlikely I'm going to finish it before the year is out, but I'm going to just like keep on keeping on. So the next book I might finish in terms of like fiction might be Nella Larson's collection here. It has Passing Quicksand as well as her short stories. I don't know if I'm going to read all three of them. I mean, this is relatively short though, so I could, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, also that was like a lot of white people I just mentioned in terms of authors, so I need some non-white people to mix it up a little bit. So yeah, that's everything that I have for you guys. I'm really tired. I apologize for the rambliness of this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of these books or are interested in any of these books. Otherwise, let me know what you guys are digging into this weekend. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.